Hi, my name's Hamish. I'm a grade two flying instructor here at Learn to Fly Melbourne, based out of Moorabbin. Today, we're gonna to be looking at pre-flighting one of our DA-40 aircraft. First off, we're gonna start in the cockpit and make sure all of our documentation is ready. Then you're gonna step outside the aircraft, check the left wing, work our way down to the tail, around to the right wing, around to the engine and the nose, and then we're gonna end up back in the cockpit and finally getting it ready for flight. Your pre-flight inspection starts when you're walking out to the aircraft. When you approach the aircraft, you should visually check the aeroplane for the general condition and it should be parked in a normal ground attitude, wings level. If the wings are not level or dropping to one side, look at the tyre. There's a possibility that the tyre is flat and will be required to be reinflated. When you're walking out to the aircraft, we'll have to remove the canopy cover. We can fold this up and once it's been folded up, we can place it in the back seat or baggage compartment. Once you've placed your equipment into the cabin, the first thing you should do is make your way out to the end of the left wing and remove the pitot tube cover. It's important that you remove this, otherwise we won't be able to get any airspeed information. Once you remove it, inspect the pitot tube for any foreign object debris. If you notice that anything's in there, let the instructor know and we'll be able to get it fixed. The first thing we're gonna do on our checklist is prepare the cabin for flight. So we'll be looking at all of the switches and screens, removing the control column locks and preparing our documentation for the flight. We need to make sure that we have the aircraft folder. We can open this up and check that the registration matches the aircraft and the aircraft folder and the aircraft call sign. We then need to fill in the date, the PIC or pilot in command, the lesson details and the student name, the start video and the start of the flight switch and then we can fill in how much fuel is on board and how much oil is on board as well. Next up, we can check the maintenance release. We need to confirm a few things on the maintenance release before we can sign the aircraft as being airworthy for the day. First up, we need to check that it matches our aircraft and we have two dates or a time and a date. Uh, these numbers represent time in service. We can then double check the time in service that the maintenance release was put back into service and that will then give us our hours for inspection. You can then see who's completed the maintenance previously. In the first section, this is our maintenance schedule and we can check what maintenance needs to be completed. We have two services, the 50 hourly and the 100 hourly. We can then check to make sure that those services have been completed. Down the bottom is any endorsements. So if there's anything wrong with the aircraft, this is where you'll find it. Over the page, we then have our daily inspection sheet. This can only be signed by a pilot in command on the first day or the first pre-flight inspection of every day. Fill in the date, your ARN and you sign it. Then we calculate the hours that the aircraft would fly in the previous day, filling in any landings and oil running. Next up, we have the aircraft avionics manual guide, the G1000 integrated flight deck cockpit guide, and we have the aircraft flight manual. Inside this flight manual, you'll find emergency procedures, the airworthiness certificate, performance calculations, normal and abnormal checklists, and any more aircraft performance criteria. Once you open the front canopy of the aircraft, you'll notice that the control sticks have been secured using a control stick lock. This will need to be removed before you start your pre-flight inspection. You can remove this and place it in the baggage compartment. Once the control column lock has been removed, first thing we need to check is make sure that the ignition key is out. Once the ignition key is out, we can then make sure that the canopy door and locking mechanism is operating correctly. Our next step is to make sure that all the switches are in the off position for the lights, the essential bus, avionics bus, main bus, fuel pump, and pitot heat. We then need to check that the circuit breakers are all in as well. We now need to check the engine control levers. We need to check the condition and the movement. We need to place the throttle in the idle position, pitch or the blue lever in the fine position, mixture, which is the red lever, in the idle cutoff position. We need to check the overall condition of the levers for any damage such as cracks or loose fittings and move the levers to the desired positions. Next, we can turn the master on. Turning the master on will power up the G1000 avionics system. We now need to turn all of the lights on, the landing light, taxi light, position light, and strobe light. We then need to turn the pitot heat on, 
and we'll extend the flaps to full or in the landing position. Okay, we need to check the enunciation panel, everything that's shown in red. Door open, oil pressure low and alternator. The door open enunciator is shown because the door's open, oil pressure low and alternator is because the engine is off. We can then hit the advisory and check that there are no failures in the system. Next, we need to check the uh, aircraft database expiry date. The obstacle expires on the 1st of Feb, 2018. The aviation database expires on the 5th of November, 2020. These databases need to be current for IFR flight. We then hit the enter soft key using the small knob, scroll all the way to the end and we're then going to check the enunciation test. This will highlight all of the lights and warning systems on the aircraft cockpit. We can then cancel the test and return the page back to the MFD. We can then check the engine indicating system, making sure that there's no red X's. The oil pressures will be flashing red because there's no oil pressure running to the aircraft. We can check the left fuel quantity and the right fuel quantity making sure the tanks are either full or the amount that you've dipped. Check the pitot heat is working by feeling if the pitot is warm. Be careful, it can be quite hot. We need to check all of the lights by walking around the aircraft in an anti-clockwise direction, checking the landing and taxi lights, port navigation and strobe light, and the starboard navigation and strobe light. We can use the checklist card to help see the strobe light flash during daytime operations. Once we've completed that, we can turn all of our switches off, turn the lights off, the master off. Before we start our visual inspection, we can test the trim wheel and the control column, which will move our, contr our control surfaces. And we can check for the full range of movement. With the trim wheel, we're just gonna move it, wind it all the way back, all the way forwards, and return it to the trim position. And we can now start our visual inspection. Okay, once we've completed our cabin inspection, we're then going to inspect the left main landing gear looking for general wear and tread on the tyre, checking that the tyre pressures are okay. Once we've completed that inspection, we're then going to work our way along the left wing, checking for the surface, any debris on the wing. We're going to check the pitot tube, drain the tanks and check how much fuel is Okay, we need to check the wheel strut, checking for any damage, any cracks in the metal, working our way down to the landing gear brake and tyre. You can check the tyre for any bulging around the side, which would indicate a flat tyre. You can check the tread depth, making sure the tyre is not bald and it doesn't have any flat spots. If there are any flat spots, please let the instructor know. You can check the outside of the tyre as well, working your way back up the wheel strut, checking the brake assemblage and the hydraulic fluid line. Check the step for its correct attachment and make sure that there are two screws holding the step to the aircraft itself. Once we've checked the step, we can then inspect the air vents, making sure that they're free of any foreign objects, such as birds or birds' nests. We now need to drain the tanks and check the fuel. We need to drain the tanks before every flight and after every refueling. We can use the cup and insert it into the fuel drain. And from there, we can determine the right color of fuel. We're looking for blue, which will give us 100 low lead. And we're looking for any contaminants like in the fuel itself. We can bring the fuel cup up to the light and check if there's any water located in the bottom of the fuel. It'll be symbolized by the little bubbles sitting at the very bottom of the cup. Once we've drained the fuel, we need to determine how much fuel is actually on board of the aircraft. We can use this fuel measuring device and attach it to the leading edge of the wing. We can place the cord into the fuel strainer. Once the cord's in the fuel strainer, we then need to push to allow the fuel to come out of the strainer. The pressure at which the fuel comes out will then flow into the gauge and we can determine from the gauge exactly how much fuel is on board the aircraft. We can now check the left wing, checking the stall horn. We can inspect the surface looking for any delamination or damage or cracks. Moving our way to the fuel tanks. In the fuel tanks, we can open the tank up and visually inspect how much fuel is on board the aircraft as well. Okay, we can then check the security of the screws holding the landing light and taxi light assembly. Moving around to the wing tip, we can untie the aircraft or the tie down strap and place it in a neat pile on the ground. From there, we can inspect the navigation and strobe lights the security of the static wicks, and then we can move on to the aileron. 
Check the fixed trim tab on the aileron for its security. And check the overall movement of the aileron system. As you move it, you'll notice that the control column moves and the opposite aileron will move in the opposite direction. Underneath is an aerodynamic balance called the aileron paddle and must be checked before flight for any damage and delamination. Check the aileron linkage hinges and pins, secure by a roll pin and make sure to check its presence and alignment and check the hinge line for security. Moving along the aileron, checking for any damage, delamination and the security of any screws and pins, we can then check the trim tab for security. Make sure there are four nuts and bolts. Moving along the wing to the flap, check the flap hinges, pins and roll pin for security, alignment, damage or delamination. Then check the hinges themselves for the security and the condition, looking for any delamination cracks in the aircraft skin or on the flap system. We can then check the alignment and security and condition of the static wicks. They should be connected to the aircraft. If they're broken, you can let an instructor know. Then ensure the inspection panels aren't missing any screws. And at the last bit, we can check the pin connecting the wing to the fuselage for any damage. Then lastly, check the radio communication and navigation antennas. Now that we've completed the inspection on the left wing, we're now going to work our way down the fuselage to the empennage. First off, we're going to check that the doors are working properly and can be closed. We're going to check the skin of the aircraft working our way down to the rudder and the elevator and the stabilizers. Check that they're free and correct. We need to check the rear door and window that they're working and locking correctly. So you can close the door and confirm that the door is locked opening up the latch and using the pin to unlock the door. You can then check the hydraulic pin to make sure that that's in its correct position. Moving our way down the fuselage, checking for any cracks, delamination or any damage. Moving down to the empennage, we'll check the leading edge. Then check the static wicks and we'll check the movement of the elevator itself. Moving across to the adjustable trim tab, we can check it for its condition, security, and again, check for any delamination. We can then check the pins, and nuts and bolts holding it to the elevator itself and the general condition for those security. We can then work our way down the rudder, checking for its attachment, alignment, check the skin for any damage or cracks, and then check the pin that runs down the middle. We can then check the condition of the rudder cables Check that they're nice and tight and then there's no damage. Then check the tail skid, making sure that there's no tail damage during a, a landing or takeoff. Then check the fixed trim tab, checking for its security, making sure there's four nuts and bolts holding it to the aircraft. Again, on the right hand side of the vertical stabilizer, we can then move our way down, checking for any damage, missing objects, and then the security of the rudder cables, making sure that they're attached, the pins are in place, and there's no general wear and tear. And then check our way across the right hand side of the elevator. We can check the aerodynamic balances and again check the static wicks for general condition. We then check the other leading edge on the vertical and horizontal stabilizers working our way down up the fuselage back to the right wing. And now that we've completed the inspection of the fuselage and empennage, we can now start with the right wing. We're going to check the surface and check the skin condition, the flaps and the ailerons. Working our way around to the front, we're going to check the fuel, dip the tanks and inspect the right main gear. Okay, we'll now check the flap for any delamination, damage and its security and attachment to the wing. We'll check the hinges, make sure the bolts and pins are all correct. We'll then check the pin and push rod connecting the flap to the wing and the hinges, inspection panels for any delamination, alignment, and damage, we can then check the static wick and the flat push rod, making sure it's aligned and there's no damage to it. We can then work our way further down the hinge line, checking each and every single pin. We can then check the uh, push rod attachment to the wing. We'll then check our ailerons. You'll notice that the control column moves and the opposite aileron moves in the opposite direction to the right wing. We can then check the pins and hinge joints and the aerodynamic balance or the aerodynamic paddle balance then check the static wicks and the condition of the navigation and strobe lights. Then untie the aircraft and we'll leave the tie down cable in a neat pile. 
Working our way down the leading edge of the wing, we'll check any stall strips. We'll then visually check the sight gauge for the fuel on board. We can then work our way down the leading edge of the wing, making sure there's no cracks, delamination or major damage, checking the step and the outside air temperature gauge. We'll then drain the tanks to determine the quality of fuel or the amount of fuel on board. We can insert the gauge into the fuel strain and we'll dip the tanks. This will show us the amount in gallons. You need to convert that to litres before flight. We'll then drain the tanks, making sure that we have a blue coloured fuel on board, which is 100 low lead, making sure that there's no water in the fuel. Water will be shown by bubbles at the bottom of the fuel. We'll then check the tyre and the condition of the tyre. We can then check the wheel strap, working our way down, checking for any major damage and the brake line assembly. Once we've checked that, we can then check the tyre Checking the tyre for its tread depth and wear, looking for any flat spots and if the tyre needs to be pumped up. Now that we've completed the inspection of the right wing, we now need to check the engine and the cowling. We're going to check the oil, check the interior of the engine, the propeller and remove the bungs. A really important safety factor as well is when you're operating around a propeller, you should always treat that propeller as if it's about to start. First, we're going to check the oil, undo the cap and rest it gently on the cowling. We can then undo the oil dipstick, unwinding it to make sure it comes loose, pulling it out and then checking the oil quantity. We should have four quarts for VFR and a minimum of six quarts for IFR. When you put the oil dipstick back in, we want to tighten it up just enough that we can feel it bite. We can now check the external power source, making sure that it's attached, there's no burn marks and it's general condition. We can then close the latch and move on to the check. The air intake vents, making sure there's no foreign object debris. We can now check the propeller blade face and blade back, checking for any dints or nicks, checking the spinner and the hub, making sure that all the screws are in there moving away down the rest of the propeller. If it's the first flight of the day for the DA40, make sure you remove the bungs from the air intakes and check that they're well clear of any foreign object debris. Having a good look inside, Make sure there's no bird nests. Moving your way down, we'll check the air intake for any foreign object debris, and we'll now check the condition of the nose, gear assembly, and exhaust pipe. Making sure there's no cracks in the exhaust pipe, and checking that it is in good condition. We can now move down the main nose gear strut, looking for its general condition, making sure the bolts are all attached and securely fastened. We can then check the tyre for its pressure and general wear and tread, making sure that we can check the tread wear indicators. We'll drain fuel from the engine, checking for any contaminants and the correct colour of fuel. So that concludes the pre-flight for our DA40 aircraft here at Learn to Fly Moorabbin. We now need to make sure the doors are closed and locked. We'll sign the maintenance release, check the weather and no tams, and then get out there to go flying.